everyone. This is Dr. Casey Johnson. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to the Unlock Wellness Podcast. I know you're going to love today's episode with Dr. Sharina. Dr. Sharina is doing some amazing work, so I'm excited to have her on to share her story with you guys. If you've been loving the Unlock Wellness Podcast, be sure to jump onto iTunes, subscribe, and write a review. It really helps me out a lot, and I really appreciate all of the feedback and support. Also, be sure to follow me on social media to keep up with the latest podcast episodes. The best way to connect with me is on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. My username across the board is at Dr. Casey Johnson. That's D-R-K-A-S-E-Y-J-O-H-N-S-O-N. You can also check out my website at drcaseyjohnson.com. It has all of the past podcast episodes and more information about each guest under the Listen tab. Thank you again for listening. I hope this episode leaves you feeling inspired to start making positive changes to your health. Now it's time for today's episode. I hope you love my conversation with Dr. Sharina. Welcome to the Unlock Wellness Podcast. I'm Dr. Casey and excited for today's guest. I'm here with Dr. Sharina and Dr. Sharina is owner of Integrate Wellness Center in Orlando, Florida. And if you follow me on social media, you've definitely seen me blasting out IWC content the last two months. And that's because I'm the newest member of the IWC team. So super excited. Uh, So Dr. Sharina is basically family now. So extremely excited to have her on the podcast. But Dr. Sharina is one of seven practitioners in the state of Florida that practice network spinal technique uh, and is also certified in Webster technique through the ICPA, which is International Chiropractic Pediatric Association. And that's just a gentle specific adjustment for pregnant women. And we'll we'll jump into that later. Uh, But I definitely want to dive into all things pediatric chiropractic and network spinal with Dr. Sharina. But we're also going to, going to chat about her own personal wellness and chiropractic journey and how it's allowed her to build a thriving practice in Orlando. But Sharina, thank you so much for taking time to come on. I'm excited to have you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. These are always fun to do. So I love, you know, talking. So yeah. <laughs> and this is one of the few days we're not in office. So it feels good to hear your voice on an yeah. off day. So. For sure, for sure. <laughs> awesome. So before we, you know, get into all things Network Spinal and IWC, uh, let's start with your backstory, you know, first off where you're from, and just really what your health and wellness has looked like growing up. So people understand how your health and perception of health has evolved over time. Yeah, definitely. So I was born and raised in a small town in Minnesota. So in the, in the suburbs of the city, so Burnsville, Minnesota. Um, my family originally is from South America, Guyana. I'm the first generation born in the United States. So that's kind of like... Um, So Guyana is more of like a Caribbean background. So if we're talking about health and wellness, it's not really there. (laughs) Um, It's definitely like lots of rice, lots of heavy, heavy carbs, um, you know, curries. It's it's, nutrition wasn't really a priority as far as looking at what we're eating. It's just in their minds, it's, it's what we eat. It's what, it's what we do. So like cultural. Yep. Definitely. Very, very, very cultural. Um, and then of course, being the first generation born in the United States, my parents discovered all of these holidays, you know, it's, it's November and October just passed. So Halloween, um, eating at Thanksgiving, eating at Christmas and just, Easter, even though like we didn't really celebrate those holidays, we were going to school. So naturally, we started eating all of the candy and just adapting to the American standard diet, (laughs) (laughs) along with our Caribbean habits of heavy, heavy, heavy carbs. So um, yeah, that's kind of the background that I grew up on. um, As far as health and wellness, it wasn't until gosh, maybe college. So in college, I backstory here, I graduated as a pre-med student. um, And then just realized after I submitted my applications that it wasn't for me. What do you think the biggest reason was that you felt it wasn't for you? Um, Honestly, like I just didn't connect. 
Like there was no connection between me or any of the docs that I was shadowing, um, any of the research that I did as far as like what the job entails. Like obviously um, my goal was to be somewhere in pediatrics in the medical world. So, you know, just, just looking at the overall picture, of course I'd be working with kids, but there was so much back office stuff and very, very, very little hands-on stuff. And I think that was, I think that that's what did it for me is I'm just so much of a hands-on person. It was, you know, a lot of going room to room, seeing these kids, and then most of the assistants or the the PAs, they handled all the hands-on stuff. That and like, there were, there were literally uh, doctors I shadowed and I just sat in their office with them watching them do paperwork for hours. It That's, that's what... Major yeah. disconnect. Yeah, super. Yeah, so like I just, after, I don't even know how many I shadowed and after... I just, I was done, you know, I was kind of like, okay, so I haven't connected with a single soul, a single person, <laughs> let me just not push myself. Cause I knew, I know me, like once I, you know, got an acceptance letter, that's it. I was going to go right. Regardless of if I connected or not. So that was just me at the time. Um, so I withdrew my applications, went back to school and then obviously needing a job, a couple, a couple jobs. Um, and one of them was working at a chiropractic office, which at the time I graduated from UCF, at the time UCF doesn't tell you anything about chiropractic. I think they do now, but at that time they didn't. Be Even being pre-med, I had no idea what it was about. So when I was at that job and employee there, that's when my health really started to turn around. I think it was just more, it just brought so much of an awareness of my body, my health, my wellness, just everything. What do you think the biggest effects that you noticed, um, like besides like body awareness, which obviously is huge, yeah. but do you, were there any um, specific things that you were dealing with that you felt like a turnaround or some kind of like tipping point uh, health wise? Yeah. I mean, it, it goes along with body awareness, but definitely like starting, I mean, it was to the point like college years, how many years is that of just tuning out completely how you really feel? Right. Like waking up with fatigue, dragging my feet, just constantly tired, um, moody, all that stuff. And it's just like you tune it out. You think it's normal because it's what you've always dealt with. And so as I started making like little changes and decisions and starting to feel better, that's when it was like, okay, something needs to happen. Something needs to make a definitive change. There needs to be a lifestyle change happening. I love it. So what, how long did it take before, obviously you were working in the office, you were noticing the health effects for yourself. You're having like a crazy amount of body awareness and it's just transforming how you view health in general. How long did it take you to decide that this was the right path? And like, this is how you were going to connect with the most people. And it just felt right. It was, it was a year after I started working there. Um, I connected right away connected like a hundred percent right away with the work, with, um, just the field itself of chiropractic. But after a year, I kind of had a conversation with myself and I was like, man, okay. So I, cause that's when a year later is when I graduated from my second degree. And so I was like, man, okay. So what am I going to do now? Like how, what is, you know, what's my calling? What's what, how am I going to serve? And It was literally a day that I decided I was going to chiropractic school and I applied that night. That's amazing. And your family was totally on board, right? They were super supportive. I mean, yeah, of course, they're going to be supportive regardless of what I do. They had no idea I applied, though. Like, I didn't tell them anything until I got an acceptance letter. (laughs) (laughs) So then it's too late. Yeah, yeah. They're kind of like, wow. I mean, they were super, super proud, like tears and all. So, yeah. That's awesome. So how was your, um, cause you knew going into chiropractic school that you were going to practice a technique called network spinal. Um, I know for a lot of people, that's a technique that a lot of people don't know about. I mean, you're one of seven in the state of Florida. I actually, I have no idea how many are in the United States. I'm, yeah. I'm guessing it's, it's pretty 
you know, few, but you went into school knowing you were going to practice that technique. It's not super well known, even in the chiropractic community, it's not known. Um, you know, like we've, we talked about a lot, like that's something that wasn't brought to my attention, even in chiropractic school. So it's, it's even super new to me. So you went in knowing that you wanted to practice that technique, right? So that, how did that, I guess, change your experience of chiropractic school? Yeah. Um, so super grateful for that job. I happened to come across, I didn't even think it was going to be a permanent, like, you know, job when I went for my second degree at a chiropractic office. So that practitioner was a network spinal doctor. So I was exposed. If you, if you think about it, I was actually exposed to network spinal before I was even exposed to chiropractic. Right. So, I mean, from there, I actually went to chiropractic school really naive, (laughs) (laughs) thinking that every chiropractic school at least talked about network, had some sort of class or whatever geared towards... Or a club or something. Yeah, I I really did. I really thought that that was the case that, okay, everyone in this field is going to know what network spinal is. And I even like, I remember first quarter and like talking about it all day, every day to people like... Like, oh yeah, have you heard it? Like network spinal, that's what I'm going to be doing. And everyone was just like, what? (laughs) So I even talked to like people, cause you know, um, going into first quarter, you always have a mentor in like sixth quarter or above or something like that. So I even talked to them about it. No one had heard, not a single soul. Some of the teachers hadn't even heard, um, what network was. So it definitely changed the whole dynamic of chiropractic school for me. It was in a way, a little frustrating, but also super proud of myself for sticking to, you know, my truth throughout chiropractic school. Like it was so much work. Now that I think about it, I was literally driving to Atlanta once a month for seminars to learn the technique because Life University has the biggest, um, the biggest student population of network spinal docs there. So I was driving, you know, in between studying, studying network spinal, being the only person in the school that knew what it was. I tried for two years, over two years of starting a club um, (laughs) and it just didn't flow with uh, the school that we went to, but that's okay. Um, Like I said, I'm really proud of myself for sticking with it. I am too, because it really is, it really is hard in that environment. (laughs) And I know like, um, I I do know that there are quite a few um, chiropractic students that tune into this podcast and just like off on a tangent really quick. And I'm sure Dr. Sharina agrees is to really explore as many techniques and just uh, like just categories, whether it's pediatric or, or, or whatever the case may be, like explore it all and see what really resonates the most with you because there's so many techniques and you don't want to ever like put yourself in a box or a small bubble because you might resonate with other techniques or mixing them together. So that's just, just a quick tangent, but I'm sure you fully agree with that. Oh my gosh, totally. Like, and it's, and it's so hard. Like you have three and a half to four years in chiropractic school, and that's still not enough time to explore everything that's out there with definitely you. not. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's crazy. I mean, especially cause you're so focused in on what the school is teaching you and all the passing boards, right? <laughs> yeah, passing <laughs> boards and preparing for boards is, is a whole nother ball game there. But yeah, definitely explore everything. Shadow doctors, get in touch on social media and see what other chiros are doing um, and try and find stuff that resonates with you. Like even being a pediatric doc, like I didn't really study pediatrics in school. It wasn't until I was actually practicing. Yeah. A lot of those things you have to seek out, whether in clubs or right. um, electives and things like that, you get very general education in those super specific topics throughout For sure. school. You have you really have to seek it out, but you'll be glad that you did. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Awesome. So kind of to get back into um, to Network Spinal. So why don't you just dive into all things Network Spinal, explain uh, what it is, how it affects the nervous system, uh, I guess just how like safe and gentle it is for kids and babies and just whatever you want to chat about as far as just Network Spinal and explaining that. Yeah. Um, it's so funny when I first started, like network is so different that you kind of go off on tangents about energy and the nervous system and gentleness and network does this and that and the other. And it's, I've just learned to come to terms with, um, 
really talking about the nervous system more than anything. So keeping it chiropractic, but yeah, no network is, it's obviously it's safe for everyone. It's super gentle. If you've ever seen videos, um, more so like it's gone mainstream. So a lot of people have started watching, you know, Netflix, the goop lab with one Paltrow, there's an episode in there that features network spinal. So it's definitely getting a little bit more popular as time goes on, but it looks wild. It looks <laughs> super different, which is why I'm sure a lot of people question things. Um, they question how is it related to chiropractic? Are you sure it's chiropractic related? And absolutely it is. Um, it is straight nervous system work, which is why the work is super gentle. You know, we're not traditionally moving bones or anything. We're working with that nervous system and just allowing the body to reorganize itself instead of us doing it um, as practitioners. But there's definitely energetics tied into it. So I'm not I'm not going to stem away from that. There's a lot of people that are like, this right. is straight energy work. There's absolutely a huge energetic component that goes into it. And But if you ask me, I think everything we do is energetic. If you 100%. Percent, yeah, walking you, into a room, absolutely. There's, it's energy work. Yeah. So I think like we need to just stop like down talking energy work and energy healing because it's such a beautiful thing. Everything we do is energy, exercising, yep. walking your dog. That's all energy. So, but there's definitely a huge energetic component. Um, the thing I love about network spinal and chiropractic in general is that every time you get adjusted, when you're on the table, anything can happen. It can be a physical response where, which mainstream, that's what a lot of people go to chiropractic for. They go for, you know, pain or whatever it may be. And they want a physical symptom to subside. That's what they're looking for. But if you're really in tune with your body and you're aware of everything, it can be anything like chemical stress. It can be an emotional release happening on the table, which happens daily in my practice. Um, but like I said, the thing I love about it is it works through literally layers of trauma that you've had in your life. It can be generational trauma. It can be trauma that you completely forgot about. Um, and just really unwinding the nervous system in that way. So you can, you know, function optimally. So same end goals of, I think, I think chiropractic in general, like same end goals, you know, absolutely. Especially if your nervous system focus, right? Yeah, there definitely are different, like we were talking about seeking out different techniques. And obviously, if your goal is to be a pain based chiropractor, then cool, like go be the best at that. But if you want to work directly with the nervous system, it's you're, you're putting yourself in a situation to really help so many people as well. And not just one person, but generations and families yes. and families trees. And I and that's what's been so beautiful being a part of IWC is like, I'm already seeing that. And yeah. I've been there for two months. And even like you were talking, you were talking about network spinal and it's, it's so different than what people are used to. And, and that can bring questions, but like, I'm telling you in the two months that I've been there, like the stories that I've heard from people, like so much diversity in our patients, right? It's not just yeah. like, uh, you know, we have a lot of, uh, you know, people that would, you know, you would think would be into that, like yogis and things like that. But yeah. like, there is, I mean, literally everybody, like yeah. medical doctors, there's, there are yogis, right? There's, uh, I mean, moms and, and dads and kids and like, obviously newborns, like that's not placebo when you see effects on a newborn. So right. it's pretty amazing to see in just the two months that I've been there, uh, being able to witness that because it's so new to me. Um, it's been really cool to see that firsthand, the effects on the people that come in every day. For sure. And it's, it's such a beautiful thing too. Like, don't get me wrong. We definitely get people walking in with pain that, yes. that, you know, want to, again, they want those symptoms, symptoms to subside, which is fine. But as soon as they get on the table and they start to, they they start to feel their nervous system unwind. It's so funny to hear the conversation change from, yep. I have this pain to, oh my gosh, like I'm sleeping better. Like I'm making decisions that align with me, you know, like there's so many, it's so fun to watch that conversation change because the awareness, the perception, everything changes. Yeah, I, I love it. Yeah. And I love it too, because like, um, you know, for anybody listening that does like manual adjustments, like right now in the office, I do manual adjustments. And then Dr. Sharina does network spinal. And we both do Webster technique. Um, I can tell a huge difference in the people that have manual adjustments that 
are also seeing Dr. Sharina. Like there's no comparison. They have more body awareness. They're honestly easier to adjust. They hold their adjustments better. Yeah. So combining it's been really cool. Yeah. Um, but it also helps that we're both on the same page and, and very, very nervous system focused. Absolutely. I love it. I love the dynamic. <laughs> so fun. That's another thing too. Like, like I said, with, um, if there's any students listening out there, you practice the way you want to, you run yeah. your practice the way you want to. There's so many, you know, it was really hard for me to find a actual network doctor. That's a mentor, um, as far as looking for associates. And once I'm at that point, you know, first of all, all, a lot of network doctors were shocked that I'm at that point and I'm only three years into practice, but here I am. Um, and a lot of network doctors have a straight network practice. So only practicing network spinal, there's nothing else. It's the end all be all. And it's like, you know, really try and let go of that when it comes to any technique, really, because it's not the end all be all. You practice how you want to. I've seen so many network doctors practice a combination of network and toggle or even network and diversified, which that's super interesting and cool. Um, even network and TRT. So you practice the way you want to, you run the show the way you want, you want to, you know, impact your community. I love it. And uh, do you want to go off on a, on a, on a tangent really quick on just, just a quick, just overview of um, the parasympathetic nervous system and just like really just making it easy for people that they fully understand. So parasympathetic nervous system or sympathetic nervous system and why that's so important being aware of that and how we treat, especially kids and pregnancies and how we really use that to make a bigger difference whenever we're just looking at a, a patient overall. For sure. Yeah. Um, so I'll call it, I'll talk about it. Like I talk about in our report of findings here, <laughs> um, but yeah, so we focus so much in on the nervous system and here's why, like if you have, you know, neck pain, shoulder pain, back pain, whatever, and nine times out of 10, it's not trauma induced. Like it's not like people are coming in with car accidents. In fact, we see very, very, very little, maybe one or two cases. And that's because they've already been in our office. Um, but if there was no trauma, like you didn't fall out of a tree or anything like that, but you have this pain, well, where did it come from? You know, it's, that's important to ask too, because the body is going to manifest things in different ways. Where do, where do all these symptoms come from? Where, you know, if people are just, they're in their thirties and all of a sudden their health takes a crash. Well, why? And that's why we focus so much on, in on the nervous system. So within your body, you have an autonomic system and it's exactly what it sounds like happens automatically. We cannot turn it on or off. We can't tell it to stop or go. It's going to respond. Within the autonomic system, you have two nervous systems, a sympathetic and a parasympathetic. So your sympathetic, that's your fight or flight. That's your stress response. Your parasympathetic is the opposite of that. So your rest, digest, growth, development system of the body. When the sympathetic system is activated, so your stress response, it's interesting because it's any type of stress. So it doesn't care if you got stressed out for like two minutes or you've been stressed out for two months it's going to respond in your body. And this is where we start to look at patterns being created. So that stress, it can be physical, chemical, emotional stress, chemical stress. Everyone always asks me about this. So I'll go ahead and explain. So chemical stress, let's just say you bought a house. Um, it's an older home and there happens to be mold in the walls. Six months down the road, you're not going to be feeling so hot. Your immune system is going to take a turn. That's a chemical stress. So internally, chemically, something's happening with the body. So like I said, that sympathetic system, it doesn't really care which one of those stressors is happening. It's going to respond. And this is where I tell people, you know, kind of think of a very traumatic event that happened in your life. Some people don't remember, but it was their birth, um, which is why we work with a lot of birth trauma in our office. But um, it could be even when your mom was pregnant, it could be a car accident, um, whatever it may be. Think about what your body was doing. And typically we look at, you know, feel position, hunched over, protecting your body. Just think about if you're about to fall four feet, you know, you're not going to just flop on the ground. You're going to protect your body as much as you possibly can. And that, you know, that puts you in that same position. So shoulders rolled forward, head pulled forward, crouching, fetal position, just protection all around. 
So if you think of that same posture and you think of like our elders with osteoporosis or whatever it may be, it looks like a very similar posture. So that's where we start to look at and call it a defense posture. When your body is constantly in defense mode, in sympathetic mode, that's where posture starts to become affected and your body literally morphs and forms and rebuilds to keep that protection going because it's constantly in a state of fight or flight. So that's why focusing in on the parasympathetic nervous system is so important to me, our practice, the community, the world, um, just getting back to that rest and digest system. So, you know, if you think of, I always tell people like, if you have a dog, think of your dog. Like if your dog gets scared or you yell or whatever, their tail goes, you know, into their butt, right? <laughs> then, you know, they hunt over and they're scared, but it only lasts for like a second or like 30 seconds or whatever. And then after that, they'll come right up to you, lick your face and be the happiest little dog ever again. They don't hold on to stress, right? It's so different with adults and even kids, teenagers, because we'll hold on to, we start to learn to hold on to that stress. And that's where posture starts to really become affected. Um, And that's where we see patterns happen, manifestation happens of different symptoms, pains, aches, um, symptoms such as uh, more chemically induced symptoms. So hormones, thyroid function, liver function, all that stuff. And that's why you know, it's really important to allow the body to come out of fight or flight and into parasympathetic mode. So I will say, like, you definitely need both systems for survival. Of course, I'm not saying the sympathetic system is bad. But your body definitely, it needs to know how to come in and out of both. And it needs to know that it cannot stay in fight or flight. So if you're in both, um, Thanks to Dr. Tony Ebel. I love this. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> I love this, um, this example here, but it's like your body's pushing a gas and a brake pedal at the same time. So it goes into chaos. Um, so your body really needs to know how to and understand how to come in and out of both. Well, that's, it's obviously perfectly explained. Uh, and I guess I next to go into, so they understand that now, why it, that makes it so important to, uh, to learn those patterns of healing as early of an age as possible. So that way they can prevent health issues over time. Because I mean, I think most people could look at kids today and and see that our kids are sicker than they have ever been. Uh, They're more stressed and they have more anxiety. And there's just, especially with this year, there's a lot going on. um, And we're seeing it like we're seeing it with the kids that come into the practice. You know, we we see it every single day. Um, so just knowing more about sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system, you know, why it's so important for kids to get checked right. um, and also go into like how early a kid should be checked as well. Yeah. And I answer this question. So many people ask all the time, like a baby, when a baby is born, they're so pure, they're so innocent. Why would they need to get checked? Well, when they're in the womb, they share a nervous system with mom. So let's just take COVID for example right as COVID happened, moms are ready to give birth and they have no idea what's going to happen. Some moms are giving birth for the first time and they're being told that they're, they have to give birth alone. Um, that dad can't be in the room or mom can't be like, it's crazy. So of course, baby is going to feel all of that anxiety and stress and kind of, and pretty much be born with that anxiety and stress beyond that. So I always tell parents like kids, they don't know stress. They don't know emotions at all. They learn from parents. So a huge example of that is a lot of people have anxiety when it comes to airports. Let's just say you have a newer babe, uh, three, four, six months old, and you're, you're baby wearing, you're walking through the airport and you're feeling this anxiety, your heart starts racing, you're sweating. Baby is going to associate an airport with stress. It's just something that's going to happen. They're, they're going to feel you stressing out about it. So then they're going to know, okay, so we don't like this situation our heart's going to go, our heart rate's going to increase because we need to get out of the situation. It's a fight or flight response. So that's where they start to pick up on parents' habits all the time. But yeah, definitely, I always recommend newborn babies getting checked. I mean, not only an alignment thing, but a nervous system thing, depending Absolutely. on if there was a birth trauma, were forceps being used, um, was it an emergency C-section, was it you know, was mom really freaked out her entire pregnancy? Was there a scare for a miscarriage? You know what I mean? Like there's, 
there's so many things more than just alignment that should be checked for every newborn. Absolutely. And even if you had the most natural birth ever, and it was a natural vaginal water birth, there still are stressors that can affect the baby. So it's obviously worth having that checked. So just so you know, just for peace of mind, and obviously, so you can help put the baby on the best path as possible. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm uh, Avon, my son is a perfect example of that. So I had like the most beautiful pregnancy. I'm not kidding. I could be pregnant every single day. If, <laughs> if I'm, it, like I'm 41 weeks pregnant, I felt so good. Like it was just so beautiful to me. Um, birth was at home. Everything went well, four hour labor. And it was, you know, I did it myself, obviously unmedicated. Um, like it was, it was great. I mean, there were a little, like I tore or whatever, but I, I still felt really good about it. But it was so funny. So probably at around 39 weeks, Avon tucked himself into the corner of my pelvis and he just sat there. And I remember my my midwife saying, okay, so we're going to be using some spinning babies techniques because this is not the ideal position that we want to give birth in. It can happen, but it's not the ideal position. And I remember he was tucked into that corner for probably about two weeks until I hit 40 weeks and maybe a day or two. And then he eventually shifted. And at that time, you know, obviously getting adjusted, doing the work that I needed to do, spinning babies, all that stuff. He moved, but him being tucked into that corner, I correlate that when he was born, he wasn't nursing on one side. So there was a definite like he did not want to even look to that side. And he's one of those babies that loves nursing. Um, He latched right away. Of course, on his good side, but that other side, he did not want to latch. Um, So I adjusted him right away. And it was beautiful because he latched right after that. (laughs) Uh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And like, and those are the stories like that we hear all the time. And it makes such a big difference. So whenever people have questions about pediatric chiropractic, obviously, they want to know how early, but they also obviously have the question, is this safe? Could it hurt the baby? Or even during pregnancy, you can kind of hit both if you want to. Um, just how gentle it is yeah. and just the safety factor, because obviously they're thinking that it's like these like crazy conventional chiropractic videos that you see right. on YouTube where like they're just trying to get like these loud pops, which we are not about, you know? So it's yeah. just, yeah, just go into that and like maybe the questions or fears that a mom may have, whether it's for their baby or while they're pregnant. Of course. Um, And I think it's like with any field before you go to that specific doctor, you're going to look up everything you need to know about, you know, the field. And unfortunately, on YouTube, there's not a whole lot of content about um, adjusting babies or pregnant moms. But it's definitely important to find doctors, chiropractors that are certified to work. Again, you mentioned the ICPA. Um, doctors that have taken coursework to specifically work with pregnant moms and babies. That's 100% one of the most important things that you need to do when you're looking for a a chiropractor, but everything changes. So those videos you you see on YouTube of straight adjusting, cracking, popping, all that stuff, throw that out the window because that is not how it works when (laughs) we work with our newborn babies at all. The work is super gentle. We always say like, it's we're using our pinkies. Um, their body weight is putting the pressure is is pretty much gauging that the amount of pressure that they use um, against our pinkies. And it's probably the same thing as like checking the ripeness of an avocado or even checking the ripeness of a tomato. That's as gentle as it gets. Um, and obviously with network spinal, it's gentle across the board. So even with my like huge crossfitters that come in, it's still super gentle. I'm not putting them in any crazy posture or anything (laughs) like that. But um, same thing with our pregnant moms, you know, everything is still very gentle. Obviously, we take the belly into consideration, things shift around as belly grows. um, And our technique will also shift around too. So everything is super safe. It's gentle and it's effective. Absolutely. And it's, it's obviously makes the practice a lot more fun when it's full of kids. Yeah. And, oh women. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> and bellies too. I was saying, <laughs> fun seeing like six bellies just run across each other in the hallways. So. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, it's really cool. And something that we're really excited about, IWC just launched a YouTube page and we're excited about it because we want to really show chiropractic in a different light. I know if you if you get on YouTube right now, like we were saying, if you 
YouTube or um, yeah, YouTube. I was about to say Google. YouTube mm-hmm. chiropractic right now, you're going to see all of these videos where it's just like trying to outdo each other with how loud the popping is. And it's in when it comes down to it, like that's not what chiropractic is about. No, not at all. Um, so we want to really shine the right light and just show what we do at the office and like show the different techniques, you know, with Dr. Sharina and myself. And obviously Kaylee and Brittany are part of the family too. And and we love them and they're going to be doing videos as well. But yeah, no, do you want to chat about that? Because we're really excited. Yeah, definitely. And exactly like you said, we're trying to launch this channel. Well, we launched it already, but build this channel to be, to show chiropractic in such a different way, in such a different light. Um, you're going to see how we work with babies, how we work with pregnant moms, but a lot of also a lot of education. So working with um, perfect storm kids, so ADD, ADHD, um, why we're doing what we're doing, what we're focusing in on, common questions about chiropractic, just everything in general, more than just, you know, obviously chiropractic goes so much deeper than just like those heavy pops and cracks. Um, And I know there's people out there that are literally addicted to it, but... (laughs) Um, going to a chiropractor brings you so much more value than just that. And that's exactly what we're, you know, we want to show, we want to, we want to build our entire community based around it. So we're excited about it. Super excited. Yeah. Yeah. And and if you, um, yeah, if you guys want to go check it out, like go subscribe, um, and check out the videos. If you subscribe, share it on Instagram and we'll give you guys a shout out because it's, we're really excited and we're just trying to grow it as much as possible and get the word out there. And just also on a side tangent, like if you aren't in the central Florida area and you're looking for a chiropractor that we trust and because we know chiropractors literally probably in most states, yeah. honestly. So like shoot us a message and we can help connect you with somebody that's local to you. I know that pe- I get that question all the time and we just want to make sure that we help you find somebody that is in alignment with what you're looking for. Absolutely. For sure. We just, I mean, we have people come in all the time that they were going to a chiropractor they love and now they moved and they've already been to three offices because they don't vibe with it. And that's important too. You really want to connect with your chiropractor. You want to connect with the office their mission, their goals, everything. You want to connect with that um, to have not only a good experience, but really for your health. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, so just, I know we were talking about YouTube, but what is the best way for people to follow you on social media and also IWC? Um, We're definitely the most active on Instagram. (laughs) And it's beautiful. Please go check it out. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It's taken a lot of hard work, but we're super proud of it. Um, Again, a lot of information gets spewed out on Instagram, we educational posts, our stories, everything just constantly sharing testimonials, everything we can possibly think of. We're definitely the most active on Instagram, but we're active on Facebook as well. You can follow us there. Um, My personal Instagram page is open and inviting to everyone as well. I share a lot about chiropractic, but also a lot about being a mom (laughs) and a business owner. So that's, that's huge too. But I mean, you can follow the staff, you as well, Dr. Casey, um, Kaylee, Brittany, our staff at IWC, all of us are super excited and passionate about sharing the mission of IWC. So you can message literally any one of us. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. And then Dr. Serena, just Closing question that I ask every guest. Yes. But if you just had one piece of advice for the audience, maybe it's something that's been your biggest takeaway on your own personal wellness journey. But if you just had one piece of advice to give, what would it be? One piece of advice. I would have to say truly listening to your body. So meaning like, how do you feel when you eat the foods you eat, when you're doing the things that you're doing? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Does your body not reciprocate well with it? Um, just really tuning in and becoming more and more and more aware of what's happening. So like like I said, like there's, of course, crossfitting is great. There's so many gyms out there right now. It's beautiful. The people that go to those gyms look amazing. But it's not for everyone, you know, so if you force yourself to do it, and the next day you wake up, and you are just not loving it, and your body hates you for it, (laughs) you wake up every single time you go, then there should be a change there should there should be a shift. And especially, you know, of course, with diet, 
if you eat an entire pizza the next day, how are you going to feel <laughs> versus, you know, healthier options, but really tuning into that stuff. Um, that's what's going to make those huge lifestyle changes more than just those temporary, oh, I want to look good change and just really tuning into that. So like I said, there's so many people out there that a vegan diet is their ideal thing. Some people it's not, um, you know, and that's okay. But really, I think that would be my best advice I could give anyone is to really like tune in to what your your body's telling you. I love it. That's perfect. And mm-hmm. Dr. Sharina, thank you so much for taking time to come on. I love you. And I'm just excited to uh, serve with you. And just, uh, I just, I love IWC. So guys, please go follow us, follow the YouTube channel. And uh, Dr. Sharina, you're amazing. Oh, so thank are you. you so much. I'm, so excited. <laughs> I'm blessed. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode. I hope you loved my conversation with Dr. Sharina. She's doing so much positive work, so be sure to give her a follow on social media to keep up with everything that she's been working on. You can find her social media links that we talked about in the episode in the show notes, but you can also find them on my website as well at drcaseyjohnson.com. That's D-R-K-A-S-E-Y-J-O-H-N-S-O-N.com. Click on the Listen tab. Then from there, you'll be able to see all of the past guests that have come on the Unlock Wellness podcast, read a little bit about each guest, and be able to click on their social media links, websites, all of that. So all of Dr. Sharina's information can be found on my site as well. If you guys loved today's episode with Dr. Sharina, be sure to jump onto iTunes, subscribe, and write a review. It really helps me out a lot, and I really appreciate all of the feedback and support. Thank you guys so much again for tuning into today's episode. I hope you loved it. I hope it inspires you. And most importantly, I hope you take action.